Hello students. Today in this class, we are going to start with the second chapter of class 7 that is nutrition in animals. So as you all studied the first chapter that is nutrition in plants, we have studied how the nutrition takes place in plants. Like we have two different types of nutrition like autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. As you all know, autotrophic mode of nutrition is a type of nutrition in which the plants can prepare their own food without depending on anyone. Similarly, the heterotrophic mode of nutrition in which the plants which cannot prepare their own food but depends on plants or depends on others who will provide food for them. Understood? So these are the two types of nutrition in plants we have studied in the first chapter. So in this chapter we are going to start with the uh, nutrition in animals. So how the nutrition takes place in animals. As you understood in the chapter first, the human beings or the animals who cannot prepare their own food and this type of nutrition is called as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Yes? So we will discuss what happens in animals, how the nutrition takes place, what are the process, what are the stages we have. Correct? So let me have a quick introduction of this lesson. So plants make their food by the process of photosynthesis but animals cannot make their food themselves. Animals get their food from plants. Some animals eat plants directly while some animals eat plants eating animals. Thus animals get their food from plants either directly or indirectly. So as I said you in the previous class, plants can prepare their own food by the process called as photosynthesis. But animals cannot prepare the food. So these animals what they do, they depend on plants. Some animals eat plants directly while some other animals eat the animals which eat plants. Correct? All organisms require food for survival and growth. As you all know, food is a basic requirement of an organism, living organism. Animal nutrition includes requirement of nutrients, mode of intake of food and its utilization in the body or collectively known as nutrition. So animal nutrition includes three main steps. What are they? Requirement of nutrients, mode of intake of food and its utilization in body. So these three things collectively known as a nutrition. So the definition, animal nutrition includes the requirement of nutrients, mode of intake of food and its utilization in body are collectively known as nutrition. So the next concept is different ways of taking in food. We have different organisms taking food in different ways. So let me see the different animals and the different ways of taking in food. First we have the hummingbird. It's the smallest bird, right? A hummingbird sucks nectar from plants. So how the mode of taking in food? It sucks the nectar, that is sweet juice from the flowers. So this is how hummingbird take the food. Next, human beings. Human beings use their hands to put food into their mouth and swallow the food after chewing. Right? So how the human beings taking the food? Taking through the hands. The help of hands, they take the food and put into their mouth and swallow after chewing. As soon as they put the food into the mouth, they will not swallow. They first chew the food using the tongue and teeth, then they will swallow. Next, infants, the babies. Infants of humans and many other animals feed upon their mother's milk by sucking them. So what they do? They suck the from mother. This is how the infants take the food. Next, snake. How snake take the food? Snake swallows the animals that is called the prey upon without chewing them. So this is the difference between human beings and snakes. So, human beings what they do, as soon as they put, in the, put the food into their mouth, they will start chewing. 
then after chewing they will swallow but snakes what they do is the snakes swallow the animal or the prey upon without chewing them so this so the snake just swallow the prey next is frog a frog capture prey with its sticky tongue as you know the frog has long and sticky tongue it will capture its prey using this sticky tongue so next we have earthworm an earthworm uses its muscular pharynx to swallow its food what it does it the muscular pharynx what you can see in the diagram this muscular pharynx help to swallow its food next we have spider spiders weave sticky web in which small insects get stuck some aquatic animals filter tiny particles floating nearby and feed upon them so what the spider does spider will weave a sticky web so with the help of sticky web they catch its prey so when the prey comes the in other insects come so it will stuck to a web right the sticky web it will stuck into the sticky web and this spider will eat that prey some aquatic animals filter tiny particles floating nearby and feed upon them so on the water on the water with the help of this algae so it will be floating some spiders or insects will be floating and these spiders also catch their prey next we have the unicellular organisms how these unicellular organisms have their food or process the food what is how the nutrition takes place in unicellular organism so let me take an example of amoeba amoeba is a unicellular organism so before understanding this we we should know what is unicellular unicellular in the sense the organisms with which has only a single cell the organisms with single cell is called a unicellular organisms single celled organisms understood so there are different ways you can express the answer single celled organisms is called as unicellular organism or the organisms which contain only single cell these organisms are called as unicellular organisms so now the example is amoeba so amoeba angles tiny particle of food by using pseudopodia what is pseudopodia so you can see in the diagram these things are called as pseudopodia so amoeba surrounds the food by pseudopodia and then makes a food vacuole to engulf the food so here you can see here the food so the pseudopodia start catching the food so after catching it will block or engulf cover the food and it creates a food vacuole then start liberating the enzymes and it will digest the food and so this is how the nutrition takes place in unicellular organism we have to, we have taken the example of amoeba next what happens in multicellular organisms what do you mean by multicellular organisms the organisms which has more than one cell or the organisms which contain multiple cells n number of cells so i will tell you cells combine to form a tissue a group of cells combine to form a tissue a group of tissue combine to form an organ a group of tissue combine to form an organ a group of organ combined to form organ system understood a group of organ combined to form organ system and at the last a group of organ system combined to form an organism a group of organ system combined to form organism from this what you can understand the human being or organism is made up of n number of cells 
and when these n number of cells group together it will be a tissue and this tissue combined to form an organ so you know what are organs eye is your organ ear is your organ right so these organs and when these organs combine to form organ system correct organ system and these organ system combine to form and complete organism so this is one thing you should remember back to multicellular organisms like hydra there are numerous tentacles around their mouth hydra uses tentacles to surround its prey and kill them with its stinging cells then the food is pushed inside the body cavity first what what it do what it will do like hydra there are numerous tentacles around their mouth there will be a numerous tentacles around the mouth hydra uses tentacles to surround its prey so these tentacles will help the help to catch the prey and it will kill with its stinging cells stinging cells means smelling cells so with the help of the stinging cells it will kill the prey then the food is pushed inside the body cavity after killing it then the food is pushed into the body cavity this is how the nutrition takes place in multicellular organism here we took a example of hydra understood next next we have the process involved in nutrition so there are mainly five process involved in nutrition first one is ingestion so you should know to read and you should know to pronounce properly ingestion digestion absorption assimilation digestion let me repeat ingestion digestion absorption assimilation digestion these are the main five steps which is involved in the process of nutrition next we have digestion in humans after taking of food food is digested and then it is passed to different parts of a body for growth repair and other vital functioning of body so what happens after taking of food food is digested as you all know food enters to a stomach in stomach food is gets digested and then it is passed to different parts of body food will not pass to every part of the body the nutrients whatever the absorbed by the food these nutrients will pass to all the parts of the body and help for growth repair the worn out tissues correct right? and also for vital functioning of the body then various functioning of the body like eating drinking walking sleeping so these are the functioning of body so for all the things to run the nervous system to run the digestive system to run the excretory system for everything for all the vital vital function of the body we need food the food we take in primarily in the form of complex substances yes the food what we take through our mouth it will be in the complex substances food in such complex form is not used such by animals so these complex form what we take through our mouth this cannot be utilized by our body hence they need to be first broken down into simpler soluble forms that they can be absorbed by cells of the body so what we need to do or what it should be happen like the complex substances should be broken down into a simpler soluble form which can be absorbed by our cells in the body so when these complex substances can be break down into simple soluble substances then it can be absorbed by the cells of our body so digestion in humans so how the digestion takes place in humans the food passes through a continuous canal which begins at the buccal cavity and ends at the anus there is a track or there is a path through which the food enters and food excrete so the track or a path starts from buccal cavity and ends at anus the canal can be divided into various compartments so this canal 
can be uh, divided into various compartments. What are the compartments? The first one is buccal cavity. Second one, foot pipe or also called as esophagus. Third one, stomach. And the fourth one, small intestine. Fifth, large intestine, which is ending in the rectum. And the last one is anus. Then, it is not a very long path. These parts together form alimentary canal or it's also called as digestive tract. As I told you, these complete compartments or the path is called as alimentary canal or it is also called as digestive tract. The food components gradually get digested as food travels through the various compartments. So food will be not digested in only one compartment or one part. It will be completely digesting from buccal cavity till anus. Understood? So we will see one by one how the process is going on. Here you can see the diagram of human digestive system where I can explain you like this is mouth. So in mouth is called as buccal cavity. In buccal cavity what you will be having? You will be having a salivary gland. Next it comes for esophagus. It's also called as food pipe. Then it will come to a stomach where HCL is liberated, hydrochloric acid. In liver, what happens in liver? There will be a bile juice, secreted, secretion of bile juice. Where, it is, where is this bile juice stored? It is stored in gallbladder. Gallbladder stores bile juice, which will be secreted by the liver, which will helpful for digestion of or breakdown of complex fats. To break down the fat, this bile juice will help. Then we have pancreas, where pancreas liberates pancreatic juice. Then, so this food travels from stomach to small intestine. So here the digestion process completes, completes. And in small intestine, what happens? It will, the nutrients will absorb by a finger-like structures in small intestine. The inner wall of small intestine contains a finger-like projections called as villi. So these villis will help to absorb the nutrients. Then after absorbing the nutrients, in the small intestine, it will send to a large intestine. So this is large intestine. When the large intestine completes or fills, this waste is excreted through anus. So this is what the digestion process happens in the humans. So we'll see in detail. Next we have digestion. The process of breakdown of complex components of food into simpler substances is called digestion. So what is digestion? The definition of digestion is the process of breaking down of complex component of food into simpler substances is called digestion. So whatever the food what we eat, it will be in complex form. So that complex form of food should break down into simpler substances and this process is called as digestion. The process of digestion in different in humans, grass eating animals, amoeba, hydra. So there will be a different process in different organisms. In all the organisms, the digestion process is not same. Understood? So the process of digestion will be different in different organisms. Like human beings will have different digestive system. Grass eating animals, they have different digestive system. Similarly, amoeba, hydra, etc. Enzymes help in the breakdown of complex molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, etc. into simpler molecules. So I told you there will be a secretion of enzymes in the alimentary canal. So there are different enzymes released in different parts. So these enzymes what they will do, they help to break down the complex molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, etc. into simpler molecules. <laughs> Digestion in unicellular organisms like amoeba is intracellular. The digestive enzymes are secreted in food vacuole. So I have explained you how the digestion takes place in unicellular organisms. Unicellular means the organisms which have single cell. Single celled organisms are called as unicellular organisms. Example amoeba. 
it is intracellular so inside intra means inside understood so the digestive enzymes are secreted in food vacuole where where the enzymes are secreted inside the food vacuole so by liberating the enzymes inside the food vacuole the digestion takes place so let me have a quick iq test regarding what we have studied so far what is ingestion so there are five main steps in the digestion process sorry the so next we have a quick iq test what have i learned so far the first question is ingestion so we have five main steps the process of nutrition in the process of nutrition we have five main steps in that first one is ingestion so what is ingestion it is a process of intake of food the intake of food is called as ingestion what is digestion digestion is nothing but the process of breakdown of complex substances into simpler substances what is absorption absorption is nothing but the process of absorbing all the nutrients from the digested food the process of passing of digested food into blood vessels that what absorbing the nutrition nutrition nutrients absorbing the nutrients from the digested food what do you understand by assimilation assimilation is nothing but the process of utilizing the absorbed nutrients or sending that absorbed nutrients to the all the parts of the body the conversion of absorbed food in complex substances such as proteins and vitamins required by body is called as assimilation understood what do you understand by ingestion ingestion is nothing but the secretion of waste materials removal of waste materials from the body time to time from anus is called as ingestion what are the steps of nutrition involved in animals so there are five main steps there are five main steps involved in nutrition in animals there are ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ingestion yes so we'll start with mouth the food is ingested through the mouth the mouth contains tongue teeth and salivary glands teeth break the food into smaller particles this process is called mastication first what happens the food is ingested through the mouth the food is taken inside the mouth the mouth contains tongue teeth and salivary glands this break teeth break the food into smaller particles as you know the teeth will start breaking the particles the food particles correct it will break down so this process of breakdown food through the teeth is called as mastication the chewed food is mixed with saliva saliva is the watery fluid secreted by salivary glands so then the chewed food whatever the food has been breakdown by the teeth this food is mixed with saliva so saliva is a watery fluid secreted by salivary glands correct saliva is a watery fluid so the liquid what you can what you can feel in the mouth that is saliva and this saliva is a watery fluid secreted by salivary glands saliva contains a type of enzyme called salivary amylase so saliva is a watery fluid which is secreted by salivary glands saliva contains a type of enzyme it contains one more enzyme in it that enzyme is called as salivary amylase so this salivary amylase which helps to convert starch into sugar so what is starch and sugar these are types of carbohydrates so it helps to convert starch carbohydrate into sugar carbohydrate understood teeth so when you come to teeth you have different types of teeth right we will see our teeth cut tear and grind the food before we swallow it you know right the teeth cut tear and grind the food before swallow it before swallowing it you need to cut the food tear the food grind the food correct there are four types of teeth in our mouth how many types there are four types 
of teeth in our mouth. First one is incisors. These are flat and chisel shaped teeth. They lie in front of the mouth. There are eight incisor teeth, four in the upper jaw and four in the lower jaw. The incisor teeth are well adapted for cutting and biting of food items. So incisors are chisel shaped teeth. Chisel shaped means flat. They will be flat, correct? They lie in front of the mouth. In front of the mouth here. In front of the mouth. There are eight incisors. Eight incisors means four in the upper jaw and four in the lower jaw. The incisors teeth are well adapted for cutting and biting of food items. Because of this, they are called as cutting teeth. Incisors are also called as cutting teeth. Next we have canis. These are round shaped sharp and pointed teeth. Canines are well adapted to hold and tear the food. They can hold the food and tear the food. There are four canine teeth found in humans. How many? Four. Two in the upper jaw, two in the lower jaw. Understood? Next. Next we have premolars. Premolars, there are two premolars in each side of each jaw. Premolars help in crushing and grinding the food. There are total eight premolar teeth in adult human. How many? There are eight. Two, 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 two. Totally eight. So these premolars and molars together they will be called as grinding teeth. Why? Because they help to grind the food well. Molars. So the last type is molars. There are two molars on both sides in both jaws. They have almost a flat surface with a small projection. These teeth are meant for fine grinding of food. So you can see here fine grinding. Complete grinding takes place with the molars. There are total 12 molar teeth including the wisdom teeth in an adult human. The four molar teeth are also called as wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth usually grow between the age of 18 to 21. So this wisdom teeth will grow in the age of 18 to 21. The tooth is covered with a white substance called as enamel. So one important thing about enamel is, enamel is the hardest substance in human body. Enamel is the hardest substance in a human body. So again we have the two set of teeth. We have in a human, in a one particular human, in a human, you will be having two particular type of sets. One is milk teeth and one more is permanent teeth. Milk teeth and permanent teeth. Milk teeth and permanent teeth. Human gets two sets of teeth in their lifetime. The first set erupts when we are babies are called milk teeth. So when we are babies, we are getting the teeth, the teeth are called as milk teeth. Milk teeth last until we are about 8 years old. Milk teeth are replaced by the second set of teeth are called as permanent teeth. So after the age of 8 years, the milk teeth start falling and the growth of permanent teeth takes place. An adult human has 32 teeth in all, 16 in upper jaw and 16 in lower jaw. Totally 32 sets, 32 set of teeth, not set, 32 teeth. And the next is tongue. Tongue is a muscular organ. Tongue helps to mix saliva in the food. Yes, after chewing the food, after grinding the food, with the help of teeth, what we will do, we will mix with saliva. To mix with saliva, tongue helps. Tongue helps to mix saliva in food. Right? Saliva is a watery fluid which is secreted by salivary glands. Where? In the mouth. So this saliva is mixed with the food, with the help of tongue. It also helps to push the food down the food pipe or esophagus. So this tongue will help to push the food inside the esophagus. Taste receptors are present in tongue and give us sense of taste. So we have different types of taste, right? 
so bitter sweet salt correct so here where and all we can uh, get the taste so in this part of the tongue you can get bitter taste and this either sides of the tongue you can get sour taste in front either sides you will get salty taste and at the tip of the tongue in front you can get a sweet taste next is esophagus or it is also called as the food pipe it is a tube like structure connecting the mouth and the stomach it is about 30 cm so the esophagus the length of esophagus is about around 30 cm esophagus has powerful muscles which gently push the food down to the stomach the esophagus contracts and relaxes in a rhythmic fashion to facilitate the forward movement of food so one thing you need to understand here in esophagus there is no digestion process happens so what is the use of esophagus esophagus help to shift the chewed food from the mouth to the stomach just it will transfer the food it is a way it creates a path between the mouth and stomach right so how it will transfer how it will pass by contracts and relax in rhythmic fashion so it will contract and relax contract and relax so this rhythmic fashion helps the food to move into the stomach this movement happens in other parts of the alimentary canal as well and is called peristalsis so the contraction and relaxation of a rhythmic fashion in a rhythmic fashion so this movement which helps the food to move forward and this process is called as peristalsis it is a one mark question they will be asking what is peristalsis there is no digestion takes place in esophagus this i have already told there is no process of digestion takes place in esophagus it is a just path to transfer the food from mouth to stomach next stomach it is a j shaped muscular thick wall bag stomach is the widest part of alimentary canal it receives food at one end from one food pipe and open into the small intestine from other end so stomach is a j shape muscular thick walled bag so you can see here it is a shape of j the alphabet j right and with a thick muscular walled bag so the it is a muscular organ complete muscular organ with thick wall the outer covering is thick correct right? so it is a j shape thick wall bag stomach is the widest part in alimentary canal so in complete alimentary canal which is the widest part that is stomach stomach is the widest part of alimentary canal it receives food at one end from food pipe and open into the small intestine from other end the one end the it receives food from esophagus that is from mouth and the other end the food will go into the small intestine entry from esophagus exit from small intestine understood so this is all about stomach one more thing in stomach the inner wall of the stomach will liberates hcl hydrochloric acid which will help to dissolve or which will help to break down the food complex food material into simpler substances understood stomach churns the food to mix digestive juices the food in the stomach is churned into semi solid the churned semi solid food is called chyme stomach churns the food into food to mix digestive juices what it does it will rotate it will turn the food to mix with digestive juices which is uh, liberated in various organs so the food in the stomach is churned into semi solid it will convert into semi solid the churned semi solid food is called as chyme so that semi solid food is called as chyme gastric juice is secreted from the wall of stomach and mixed with food so gastric juice which is liberated in the inner wall of the stomach that will be mixed with food so gastric juice contains some enzymes and hydrochloric acid
So as I told you, in the inner wall of the stomach, releases gastric juice that contains some enzymes and also hydrochloric acid. Next, we have a small intestine. The food leaves the stomach at certain intervals of time and enters into the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of the digestive system. One more important thing, small intestine is the longest part of digestive system. Whereas stomach, stomach is the widest part. Small intestine is the largest, the longest part. So here you can see the food leaves the stomach at certain intervals of time and enters into the small intestine. So at every intervals of time, stomach will release the food into the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of the digestive system. It is about 20 feet or 7 meters long in an adult human. In an adult human, the length of a small intestine will be 20 feet or it may be 7 meters. Length, small intestine is a highly coiled tube. It is a highly coiled, it will be coiled. It, uh, coiled means, see you can see here, it will be like this, coiled. It consists of three parts. So small intestine, it will contain three parts again. Duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. These are the three parts of small intestine. Next we have the large intestine. The digested food enters into large intestine after small intestine. So after the process of food happening in small intestine, it will come to large intestine. The large intestine is a wider and shorter than small intestine. When compared to small intestine, it is shorter and wider. It is about 1.5 meter in length. It is 1.5 meter in length, which is very smaller than small intestine. After complete absorption of the nutrients from the food, the small intestine will send the absorbed food, absorbed food. That is, after absorbing all the nutrients from the food, the food is sent to a small, large intestine. When large intestine gets completely filled, so the waste food excreted through the anus, excreted through the anus. So this is all about the digestion process in humans. Next concept and the last concept is digestion in grass eating animals. So what about the digestion in grass eating animals? How it would be? So you know the grass eating animals are called as ruminants. So what are ruminants? The grass eating animals are called as ruminants. None of the animal can digest cellulose which is a major component of the food eaten by herbivores. So herbivores means the animals which eat grass and grass uh, plants and plant products. Correct? So when they eat plant and plant products there will be a nutrient called as cellulose. This is the component where it cannot be digested very easily. So the plant eating animals digest their food in two steps because the cellulose cannot be digested in simpler ways. So it is a complex way to digest. So what these grass eating animals will do, the plant eating animals digest their food in two steps. Their stomach is divided into four chambers. So what are the rumen, reticulum, omasum, obomasum. Let me repeat. Rumen, reticulum, omasum, obomasum. So these are the four chambers where ruminants digestive system is divided into four parts. First of all, half chewed food is swallowed, it swallowed and it then goes from mouth to rumen. So here they will eat the grass from the mouth. It is half chewed, completely not chewed, half chewed. So this food will go to rumen, the first part, first chamber, rumen. The first chamber of the stomach, here it is acted upon by bacteria. So what happens in rumen? Rumen, the half-chewed food will be reacted with the bacteria. So these microorganisms digest the cellulose. So whatever the cellulose present in that grass, which will be break down by using the microorganisms. Half digested food goes to the second muscular chamber, the reticulum. So half digested food, that is from rumen, it will go into reticulum. From reticulum, the food is sent back to the mouth. 
so from reticulum what happens directly sent to the mouth sent back to the mouth as cud so that sending back of the food that food name is called as cud to be chewed again so which is to be chewed again when you send back to the mouth that food should be chewed again chewing of cud is called rumination what is rumination chewing of cud which is sent back to the mouth by reticulum understood that is called as rumination and such animals are called as ruminating animals or ruminants so the animals which will be following or using this process so those animals will be coming under ruminants for example cow goat buffalo sheep bison etc are good examples of ruminating animals understood after digestion and absorption nutrients from food are taken to the cells in the all parts of the body the cells oxidize the food to release energy so after digestion it go on it undergo absorption so in absorption all the nutrients from the food taken in the cells and it will send to all the parts of the body and this cell will also oxidize the food to release energy so this is the process what happens in rumin ruminants and this completes the complete explanation of second chapter that is nutrition in animals hope everyone understood thank you